Okay, ready to go? Uh, you know, I had a really enthusiastic uh, practice for, you know, sometimes you worry about what you're going to get coming back off of spring break. Uh, you know, we got the Monday, you know, Monday, Wednesday, Friday, and before spring break, you know, they took a week off, you know, a week away, uh, but came back energized, um, you know, worried about the conditioning, come back after a week because you don't know what they did, what they're going to do. Um, but they came back pretty good today. I was um, happy with really the way practice ended. Um, last Friday, I did talk, did I talk to you guys after for practice Friday or no? Yeah. We did? Okay. Um, you know. Again, it was a, you know, as the offense started fast and kind of petered out at the end, and the defense stole the end of the show. Today, I would say it was more balanced. I mean, we talked about finishing on both sides of the ball, and there was you know, a lot of competition. Ended the practice today down in the red zone uh, at the plus 19, and worked in there. So, uh, so happy after day four. Really, uh, got three live periods in there. So, about uh, you know, I guess probably uh, 25 minutes of live periods today. Uh, actually, 24 minutes of, of live today, and uh, saw some good stuff. Getting, getting better at some of the details. Um, you know, the offense is moving along, you know, well for uh, for being new. And uh, we did have an injury last Friday. Uh, Nate Temple, um, uh, lower leg injury, and uh, he'll be out for the year. Um, it won't be one where he'll be back for you know for fall camp. So, um, so that's kind of what we're dealing with right now. And, it's part of the game. We feel bad for Nate and his family. Uh, you know, Nate had a pretty good year last year. Was looking to have even a better year this year. So, um, you know, disappointing there. So, questions? Yeah, great, great question. You know, and that's not going to happen all the time. Um, and sometimes you don't like to set that precedence. Um, but you know, I think you got to treat everybody individually. I think both of them felt like they messed up. And you know, you know, the, the thing the thing about these young men right now, you know, they hear all kinds of different stories and they think, you know, that you know the grass is greener. But those are two young guys that, you know, I should say, two old guys that uh, you know played a lot of football here. Um, you know, two. Pretty darn good leaders for us. Um, that you have to, you know, if, if they were anybody else, it probably doesn't happen. Um, matter of fact, there was, you know, another guy that wanted to come back. Um, so you know, you hear about the glory stories, but there was another guy that wanted to come back, and um, and that wasn't happening. So it didn't give him an opportunity. So it's just everybody's a little bit different, and um, you know, and uh, so those two, you know, two team guys that. You know, when you think about just the attitude that they bring every day, you know, in the meeting rooms, on the field, um, you know, they're, they're team guys and, and uh, program program guys. When you, first, when you first saw him practice, you were you a younger player for the team? Like, what was that guy like? Okay, you know, the first guy I'm going to mention is is uh, Kyle Lewis, and I don't know, you know, when you say young, like he's still young. Um, you know, last spring, if you recall, he was playing basketball in February, hurt his knee, so he didn't go through spring ball. So this is his first spring, but he is flying around. He's physical. He's active. You know, I like what I see out of him. Uh, Biles is another guy. Rasheem goes by Sheem. Maybe we got to get him in here one day. Uh, Sheem is – he's an athlete. He, he, he got a sack off the edge on a third down today um, that he was about this far off the ground, crawled and sacked the quarterback. It was like, you know, it's hard to do. It's hard to bend like he did around that corner. Uh, I don't know who the, the right tackle was, but um, we'll see that on videotape. Um, but uh, he's he sh you know, shown that his motor is just just keeps getting better. Um, trying to think um, up front, still a work in progress, but um, you know, day on his own flashes, just looking for consistency all the time. Uh, in the back end, you know, really, you know, um, you know, happy with, you know, obviously Donovan and Javon and, and PJ O'Brien, those three guys are solid, but uh, tell you the two other young guys, um, since you asked defensively, it would be Cruz Brookings is doing a heck of a job. He's going to be a great football player for us. And then the other even younger guy that has shown, you know, s some uh, maturity here in the last four months is Jesse Anderson. Uh, Jesse's had a good spring after four. Uh, so, you know, that safety position is pretty deep right now, um, which is good. It's some quality players there. And, um, you know, I would imagine one of those guys is going to be out there when we get into our nickel package on third down. 
that could really help us because uh, they're, they're pretty smart as well. Um, corners, you know, Tamari, you know, Tamari and Crumpley and Gandy still, you know, are progressing there. On offense, Mumfield had, a, you know, he's not a young guy. He had a heck of a day today. Um, other young guys at receiver. Um, there's not many others. Mumfield just walks in looking pretty. Um, but, um, but, you know, young receivers, young receivers um, still working there. You know, um, I guess a young guy, young guy, you know, we think about the freshman coming in is uh, Joel's golf is, is, you know, has shown he's got a, he's got a different gear. Uh, he's got some of that Izzy Abandacana speed, I think. Um, we'll see more. I uh, still haven't seen enough to, to you know, uh, to say he's, he's Izzy yet, but uh, he's shown some, um, some really good things. Um, you know, on the offensive line, you know, uh, Isaiah Montgomery's really playing well at right right tackle and left tackle playing a little bit about both he can play him guard as well but you know him and Terrence Enos are stepping up you know looking at you know that that sixth man seventh man who's it going to be happy with him um and uh you know the quarterbacks are a working prop guards but I, I tell you what Nate Yarnell I had the best day that you know of, of, of spring today uh, he just seems to continue to get a little bit more comfortable every day I was impressed with Nate today you know Again, I hate to sometimes make comments, but you asked a good question and um, and uh, I gave you a lot of names there. Uh, but you might watch the tape and I may say he stunk too. So um, I'll reserve judgment for, for later on, but that's my post-practice evaluation. But to tape sometimes, sometimes you feel good and you walk in there and go, oh my God, we're awful. We gotta fix this, fix that. But you know, it was a good day, all three phases. Did Brandon claim, take a claim that linebacker? Brandon George? Yeah, Brandon George is, is uh, you know, he's, he's our starting Mike right now. Um, and, um, but, you know, we're, you know, we're going we're gonna to play some guys in there. We're going to play, you're going to play six linebackers, you know, a lot. And I tell you, we got uh, Lovelace is in there right now. Uh, Brandon Lovelace is looking good at Mike Linebacker. He had a play today uh, that was probably, didn't mention Lovelace. Did I mention any linebackers? Yeah, I mentioned his other two. Brandon Lovelace had a, a blitz and then he redirected to his right. And, and made a tackle. I was like, holy cow. He looked like, matter of fact, Servassier Dennis is out there. It looked like a little Servassier Dennis move there today. Um, just changing directions, getting flat and making plays. So um, Braylon's another young guy that uh, I think continues to get better. You know, it's, uh, it's up and down, and we're not giving those guys a ton of reps in a row. Um, but uh, um, interiorly, you know, I'd say, you know, uh, Fitzsimmons is doing a nice job in there. Um, I'd say Nakai Johnson is learning how to play inside. Uh, we got to keep his shoulder square a little bit and, and get that down hand to make some contact a little bit better. But he's a defensive end going into his fourth practice. If you guys recall, if you go to the last six plays of Duke, he played inside and played well. Um, but he, you know he's been in there. You know Nick James. I don't know if he finished the practice today. He might have got a little ankle at the end. Um, but he's he's shown some promise in there. Uh, we'll keep getting him better. Um, again, giving you all these names without a depth chart sitting in front of me, so I'll probably forget people. So um, I'm trying to think of who else inside. If you name a name, I'll give you one, but I don't have one in front of me. EJ didn't give it to me, but that's probably good enough right there. What's changed about what, what led to the change of mentality? You know, it's it's interesting. You think maybe you know we should have been smarter as coaches to maybe make the move, but um, you know, some guys can just you know, there's there's more thinking. A defensive end than there is a D tackle, um, and uh, you know I just think he was one of those guys that plays a little bit slower. I think he just thinks too much, and sometimes you figure time will take the thinking out of it for him. It just didn't happen. Then we put him in that. You know I think we started working him inside maybe the last two weeks of the season. We put him in there. It was like holy cow! I think we found a home. He's about 275 pounds right now. He's twitchy, uh, so he's not like Devin and David and those guys last year who were big. You know, physical inside guys, but he, you know, he, the guy's, he's twitchy, and he gives you a little bit different gear in there. Um, but we just got to teach him how to play with a little bit more leverage and use his hands a little bit better. But uh, it, I think it was just a matter of you know, the, the taking the thinking out of it and letting him play, just be physical. And I didn't think size-wise he could do it, but I mean, he's 275 now, maybe 280, and you know, he probably weighed 260 uh, back in the Duke game. And if you put those six plays on, you're going, holy cow. Why didn't we make this move earlier? Ken, I know you worked with Tim Delpy and Matt together this year. Tim had experience practicing with those two positions. What did you like about the way he played the game here in the 
Yeah, Tim. Tim's a hell of a coach. Uh, I probably didn't get to talk much about him in any pressure, but you know, started working with him at Northern Illinois and Cincinnati, and he's an outstanding coach. You know, I've interviewed him before, and he's you know he's a good friend of mine as well. Uh, so he's been a friend for a long time. But I don't hire friends. I hire you know the, the best people for the job. And uh, you know, it was the first time we had an opportunity to hire him or, or interview him as a D-line coach. Um, he you know shoot, he was an excellent special teams coach. Um, at ECU, I think they had the second most um, respected uh, special teams group in the, in the country last year um, down there. So uh, I didn't want to interview him because it was kind of a tight end slash special teams job. Uh, but he texted me and said, hey, you know, we run pretty good special teams down here. I was like, shoot, I got to interview him now. But I was like, God, it's, you know, it's going to be hard at that tight end spot. So I interviewed him. It's always hard to turn down a guy when, um, when you love him as people. And you know, I know he's a great coach. Um, but it's got to be the right fit at the right time, and, and uh, it was the right fit at the right time. And uh, again, just a, he's a great teacher. Um, he's the, certainly the, the leader of the receiver group, without a question. I mean, he's, he's more vocal. I mean, what you see is a guy came in, you know, quiet, just doing his job, and uh, now he's he's a little bit more vocal um, and, and still does his job. And and the thing about Kanate is he, he's the same person every day. You don't get a different Kanate. You're not getting this, you know, these highs and lows. Uh, you know, you talk about consistency. Um, you know, Kanate's, you know, he's really consistent. And um, we've got him playing, you know, we've got him playing on the outside right now. Um, you know, we, we play so much press corners, and you think about, you know, people around. He plays inside and out, but we've been able to put him a little bit more outside so you, you we're able to use his speed against corners. Um, and, uh, and all that press coverage. So if he can win at the line of scrimmage, he's going to make some plays. He had two big-time catches today at practice you know, on deep balls, and he's been begging for deep balls. So now we're giving him the opportunity to be out there where you get an opportunity to have more deep balls um, you know, thrown to you when you're playing at the number one receiver either side. Are there still growing pains for you offense? You know what? I think it's a great question for Kanate, but like, you know, I think there's growing pains anytime you're on the field, and there's growing pains, um, you know, even with the defense in year number 10, there's always growing pains. But I don't see as many growing pains right now with our offense as I saw last year in spring ball or fall camp. You know, uh, I think our offense staff doing a heck of a job coaching. I think you know the players are buying into the scheme. And I think they're having fun out there and they're making plays. I mean, there's a lot more production on the field um, you know, that I see. I see, I see you know, getting the ball in playmakers' hands, giving them an opportunity to, to make plays in space. Um, and, and spreading out a little bit. So I think uh, I don't see the growing pains that you maybe think we would have after four games, Jerry. I have a couple more before we get to our player reps. Anything else? Uh, Pat, any thoughts on, on Kenny and the speed up of the Eagles? Um, you know, hey, it's business, right? Business for everybody. Business for the Steelers and business for Kenny, and it's business as usual. Um, you know, I, I usually don't pay attention to uh, – uh, to all the stuff going on. It seems like is there a lot more turnover in free agency this year? Is it a bigger year for agency than normal? It just, you know, again, I don't follow it. But I saw my man Dane's going to the Panthers. I think, you know, Avante's out of, you know, there's a lot of things moving moving around, you know, throughout the country. And, um, you know, I think Avante may be going to the Saints. Is there anything, any truth to that? I think so. I haven't seen the sign yet. Yeah. Yeah. Um, so, I mean, there's all kinds of, I'm probably missing somebody. But, um, and then you got Aaron Donald, you know, the legend. Hall of Famer um, um, in, in 29, I guess, will be, be his year there. But, uh, you know, it's, it's part of business. I mean, um, you know, that's why they call it free agency. I'm happy for Kenny. I'm happy for the Steelers. I think, you know, things happen for a reason. And, uh, you know, the first thing I think about Kenny is just being back home. Um, I'm sure his dad can drive two hours. Mom and dad can drive two hours across the state of New Jersey and, uh, and get to a Philly game. So. It's part of business. It's the NFL. It's like the, it's like the NFL transfer portal, right? Yeah, I did talk to Kenny. Yeah, he's 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 doing great. With Aaron Donald retiring, do we may see him more around here? You know what? I loved seeing him uh, at practice last week. I, I don't know if you saw him at the beginning of practice. He was there at the him and his wife and kids were there at the uh, practice uh, last Friday before spring break. Um, but no doubt about it. Hopefully, he can come in and coach our guys up a little bit too. We'll take him. I'm sure he's got plans with the family. Um, but, uh, you know, I'm sure we'll see him around here lifting weights like he normally does. And he's here all the time. 
anyway this time of year, but we'll see him hopefully in the fall more. Hopefully we can get him for an honorary captain next year because we haven't been able to get him yet. Coach, thank you very much. You got it.